Hi guys, today we're gonna to take a look at storage on Azure Container Apps. Now with containers, you want to persist your data outside of your container because containers are typically ephemeral, meaning that they will get created and they will get destroyed and whatever was ever a part of that container when it was deployed gets deleted. So if you're expecting data to be there the next time a container or container instance starts, it won't. So what you do in that case is you store the data outside of the container. Now that's pretty easy to do with a database because you're typically connecting to some kind of external database storage and be like SQL on Azure, or maybe it's a MySQL database and you're using a client to connect to that database and the data gets stored outside of the container in that context. But that's not always the case with something like file storage, which, which we're going to be talking about today. With file storage, you need to be able to mount some storage into the container, but also persist that data outside of the container. So what you basically create is a share that gets created inside of the container at a mount point, and then you can reference it just like you would any other part of the file system. So we're gonna show you how to do this with container apps. It's actually pretty straightforward and easy to do, but it's not something that you can just do in the portal. So you basically just need to create a container and then get its manifest, change some settings in that, and then reapply those changes to your container app, and then you'll have storage mounted. So once we have that, we'll be up and running in no time with a storage in a container on Azure Container App. So this is the, the container app that I'm going to be using, and this container app is currently just running Nginx. So it's basically just Nginx using the default container that comes from Docker Hub. Now, what I want to do, though, is update the content for this particular container with my custom code, which would just be a static website in this case. So I want to replace this page right here, which is basically just the default page that comes with the container. I want to replace it with my site so that whenever I connect to my site, you'll see my content, but that content isn't going to be hosted in the container. I'm going to put that on Azure files so that it can then be mounted into this container. So that's really my end game. So let's walk through how to do that. So to make this happen, I need to create a storage account, which I've already done. And I created a file share called my content. So once you have the storage account created, the next thing we need to do is link these two together. So to do that, we're going to use the Azure CLI uh, for that process. So the Azure CLI is just a tool that allows you to make changes to resources and uh, things about Azure. And so this particular uh, command right here that I just pasted in, I just ran it and it basically created uh, a link between the two resources. So between the container app environment and the blob store, not the blob stores, the file share right here. So to unpack this command a little bit, basically what I have here is this right here says uh, AZ container app environment storage set. And then you give it the name of the, the container app environment that you're gonna be using. In my case, it's called storage demo. Then the resource group is storage dash demo. This is the name of the storage name. This will become important in a minute whenever we configure the storage on this particular um, container app. The Azure uh, file account is just the name of the storage account. This is the account key right here, which is just from the portal. And then this is the share name. And of course, this is the mode, which is gonna be read, write. I could probably do read in this instance, but read, write's fine. Um, and if you run that command, then you should end up with something that looks like this for the output. So once you have that done, now we need to configure the container app to use a storage because the, the storage is not a part of the container app. It's a part of the container app environment. And we need to associate it from the container app environment into the container app that we're going to be using. The next thing that we need to do is run a command that will get the output for the current configuration for the container app, which is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to do this right here. I'm going to run this container app command right here that's going to be using the Azure CLI. Basically, what this is doing is getting the details for it. And it's going to output it to a YAML uh, output format. And so it's getting the name of the app, which is storage demo right here. And that's the name of the resource group. And then that will output it to a YAML file, rather just output to the console. Now I'm going to copy this uh, data right here and I'm going to basically paste it into um, a, an internet, uh, not a browser, into a text editor so that I can use it for uh, editing. Uh, because I can't edit it in the state, but I can uh, basically output it to a file where I can just uh, copy and paste it into a text editor. That's going to look something like this. So this is the um, container app right here. And this is the data that I need to configure for this particular container app. So a lot of this is not needed. It's just a, a bunch of metadata. The stuff that I'm mostly interested in 
is in this, this particular block of code right here. And we're gonna add to this. We're basically just gonna tell the container where I'm gonna be mounting this storage and then what uh, what name am I gonna associate with this. So basically what uh, storage did I create inside of my container app environment that I'm gonna be using the name to tell it which storage I'm gonna use and then I'm gonna tell uh, the container app to mount it at a specific point, which is going to be configured in this block of code right here. So the changes of this are actually pretty minimal. So we basically want to create a volume mount uh, for this a particular container. And we're going to put that right here before the resources. Um, and if I add a line here, I should be able to paste in some code right here. So basically what I'm telling it is I want to use a volume name right here. And this is the mount point. So this is the mount point in the container that I want to put that particular share at, which in this case is going to be that um, place where Nginx is going to read the HTML files from. Now, I also need to add volumes into this. So the volumes uh, are another piece down uh, here that we need to add between these lines right here. And this is basically just going to be uh, on the same level as containers. And I'm basically just going to tell it, this is my name right here. This is the, the type, and this is the storage account that I used, or rather the, the storage name that I used when I created it just a second ago. And so this associates it with uh, this particular mount point right here. And so this uh, will allow me to create the actual uh, storage mounted into this particular container app right here. So once you have this, we can save it out and uh, we're gonna save this out onto uh, a particular folder that I already have prepared for all my content. So let's just go ahead and save this out and I'm gonna save it out and put it into this, this folder here. I'm gonna call it storage.yaml. And um, that then is just going to give me the file. Now, the next thing I need to do is apply this file back to the um, particular container app that I'm configuring, and that way it will update it with storage. To apply the changes, I need to basically just run a command, and that will apply the changes I made to that YAML file. So I do az container app update, and then I tell it the name of the container app. This is the name of the resource group right here. So they're both named storage-demo. And then this is just the file and then run that command and it will apply those changes to your container app. When it finishes, you should see some output that looks something like this. It'll take a minute for the container to restart, but now we need to update the content on the actual share that I created. Now there's a lot of ways you can do that. I'm just gonna use Azure Storage Explorer and upload the content. But once I get done with that, then we will uh, actually see the site running with my content on it. So here is my Storage Explorer and I've opened up my content share right here. And I just basically wanna move in all of my, my storage from my static website into this. So just a bunch of assets that I'm just gonna drag over here and it's just gonna be able to upload all that using the uh, Storage Explorer right here. And once that gets uploaded, then I should be able to go over the container and load it. So we'll come back when this done, is done. Now that that's done, I'm back in the Azure portal. And now I should be able to go back to that container app right here and launch it. And instead of seeing Nginx's homepage, it should just see my what my website, which we do right here. So this is just my blaze.net website, but I basically just uh, recreated it using the content output because I use a static content for my website. So this one just gives you, you know, the basic output of that. And you can see that it's running against uh, the storage demo right here. Um, some of these links I think are fully qualified. Uh, this one's not right here. This is just my blog or whatever. So you can see um, you know, my blog up on this particular uh, container app right here, but none of this is particularly novel. It's just using uh, some of the st static output from my website to upload to this uh, storage account that allows me to mount it into a container app, which then will serve it up. Now, of course, there is a lot more uh, more pertinent uses for container apps than just you know, running a static website like this, because this would not be a very efficient use. But if you needed to have file I.O. and you want to persist that data outside of the container, this is certainly the way you'd want to approach it if you're using container apps for that reason.